Good morning. Another day, another rear wheel test. Today, we're doing on the Apple MacBook Air M2. And as per the usual, we're gonna test out the device all while we explore. Right now, we are in a car, obviously, heading upstate to what's called the Mid-Hudson Valley. We're gonna stop in a town called Kingston, where my sister lives. And then from there, we will explore a little more of the region. All, of course, while testing out the laptop. But, first things first, don't crash and die. That's first thing. Then there's coffee, actually. It's priorities. They've changed slightly while driving a car. Coffee. Check. And we're upstate at my sister's house here in the Hudson Valley. Now the Hudson Valley is actually broken up into three sections. We have the lower Hudson Valley, we have the upper Hudson Valley, and we have the mid Hudson Valley, which is where we are now. And this is actually a valley, like geographically. And there's a river that runs down the middle of it, which is the Hudson River, hence the name Hudson Valley. And the Hudson in all of this comes from Henry. Hudson, who was a British explorer who, like other explorers at the time, was trying to find a northwest passage between Europe and Asia. And he ended up discovering what would ultimately become New York City, Long Island, and he was the first European to sail up this river, hence why they gave it his name. And thus began the settling of this area by the Dutch and then by the British. While we're upstate, though, let's chat about the styling of the new MacBook Air M2. So firstly, as soon as you pick it up, it is, as the name would suggest, light, like air, not quite like air. It's heavier than air, but it's even 0.1 pounds lighter than the last generation MacBook Air. But it's actually a completely redesigned model as far as like the chassis and everything is concerned. We no longer have the wedge shape that we're used to with the MacBook Air. It's now a little more squared off, taking some hints from the other newer MacBooks in the lineup. And honestly, I kind of like the more squared off design that all of the MacBooks are going, and so this is starting to follow suit, so I like it as well. Something else I like is the choice of colors now. We have the usual silver and space gray, as well as starlight, which is basically gold. And we also have a new color, midnight, which is the color that I have here, which is kind of like a, it's, it's a really dark blue, almost like a slate color. In certain lights, you might confuse it for black, but it's a nice color. And personally, I always go for whatever the newest color is. So Midnight is what I went for. But I will say that the darker color of Midnight definitely shows more fingerprints versus the lighter colors. So something to know if that's something you care about. Now something else you might notice on the outside here is that MagSafe is now on this model. And that might not seem like the biggest deal, like the idea is that when you're charging your laptop, if someone runs across the cord, it'll just pop that off instead of pulling your laptop down to the ground. And that's and that's a nice benefit. Honestly, the magnets on here are pretty strong. I'm not sure that will always work, but I get that. But the real benefit here is that you can charge the laptop via MagSafe. And while you're doing that, you still have two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports available. Whereas before you'd have to use one of those to charge the laptop and you'd only have one free for other stuff. And for me, especially if I'm doing like photo editing or video editing, it's nice to be able to like plug in two different drives and move things between them or plug in a monitor and then have something else plugged in. Again, it seems like a small thing, but having MagSafe gives you that extra port. And lastly about the styling, it feels as you would expect from a MacBook Air. You can lift the screen with one finger. There's no flex in the screen. It, it just feels solid like you would expect a MacBook Air to feel. All right, it is super hot out today, but it's nice and cool in here, thanks to today's sponsor. This is the GE Profile Clearview Window AC. And now maybe you've seen ACs before that allow you to open and close the window, sure. But this takes that to another level. This unit sits on the window sill and hangs over either side, which allows you to open the window freely as it's not holding the AC in. But unlike those other models that allow you to open and close the window, they normally block some of the window. Whereas this blocks out the least amount possible. In addition to that, the unit also works with the G Profile Smart HQ app and connects to Wi-Fi. So you can, like I did as I was pulling up, turn on the AC remotely so the space is cool when you get in and turn it off remotely too if you won't be back for a long time to save on electricity and you can do that from anywhere. You can choose between a 6100 BTU model and this 8300 BTU model depending on your cooling needs. But regardless, it's ultra quiet at just 41 decibels. So quiet. G Profile is the quietest window AC brand in the US, which you know, I really appreciate. You can learn more about this unique AC unit at the link below. And thanks again to G Profile for sponsoring this video.
Okay, let's head out into the heat now and check out a place that I've never been, but I think most of us have heard of. Welcome to Woodstock. Yes, that Woodstock. Funny thing is, Woodstock the music festival that made the name Woodstock famous was indeed named for this town and a series of smaller concerts that occurred around this town called the Woodstock Soundouts. Now these were the inspiration for that 1969 festival that attracted over 400,000 people or so. But contrary to most people think, especially ones that visit here, that happened about an hour and a half drive from here in a town called Bethel on a man named Max Yasker's 600 acre dairy farm. Regardless, Woodstock definitely has a vibe that the festival was kind of all about, and that's because it's a big center for arts and culture in the region. Even as far back as the 1800s, many members of the Hudson River School of Painting, which wasn't actually a school, by the way, but a famous style of painting at the time, showcasing the Hudson River, often on large canvases depicting the area as this utopian wilderness, and often was used as statements against the industrialization that was happening at the time. I actually think I wanna do a completely separate video on that with a different device. Let me know if you guys would want that in the comments below. But from there came Ralph Radcliffe Whitehead, Bolton Brown, and Hervey White in 1902 when they founded the Birdcliffe Arts Colony with a landscape painting actual school and many other arts programs. And it's actually the oldest still operating arts and crafts colony in the United States. And since then, Woodstock and art kind of became synonymous and the town still has a very artsy vibe. So I guess like coffee check again, I really just wanted to test this laptop out at a coffee shop because I feel that is a very popular use case. So here we are at the Mud Club, which is this very cute, entirely outdoor coffee shop. You walk up to the window, you order, and then you sit down in what feels like a little bit of a forest. I can also confirm the coffee is good and everyone here has been telling me I should try the bagels and the pizza. But while we're here and we're outside, it's probably a good time to talk about the MacBook Air M2's new screen. And the first thing you'll notice is yes, it has a notch, but you can hide it if you want with an app like this one. And frankly, as I've said in the past, I'm pretty sure Apple does this on purpose. It makes the device look instantly recognizable from the front. You know it's a MacBook, no other computer looks like that. And even in icon form, you know what it is. And I know it polarizes a lot of people, but it doesn't bother me in the slightest. In fact, the truth of the matter is that the screen is larger now because it's taller by the distance that is in the notch. So I like to think of it as I'm gaining all the area to the right and left of the notch not losing the notch, if that makes sense. Now besides adding the notch and lengthening the screen by about 0.3 inches diagonally, we also have less bezels on this model and rounded corners, which just gives it a much more modern look, finally. Now that screen is bright and colorful, just like the old MacBook Air was, but it's about 100 nits brighter than that screen, which makes it just a little bit easier to see in the daylight. But it's not quite as bright as the Pro 14 and 16 models. Now I recommend this on all of the MacBooks, but even more so on the Air and the Pro 13, which is scale the display, which basically you just go into the settings and you can select scaling and more space. And it just kind of gives you a little more room. It makes the 13.6 inch screen feel less cramped. And at the top of that screen, we now have a 1080p webcam. It's the same from the Pro 14 and 16 compared to the 720p that we had before. And here's what that looks like and sounds like. Okay, for battery life, I've been sitting at this coffee shop for about two hours doing research on Safari and using Notion and sending messages on Telegram, all at 50% brightness on the screen, and I lost 8%. That is great. This is Tinker Taco Lab. Tinker is the name of the main drag here in Woodstock. And this is a casual counter service taco spot that I've been wanting to try. It's situated on a cute little historic brook, actually, and has a ton of outdoor tables, string lights, it's hidden behind a sunglass hut and a cupcake place, which I want to try maybe some other time. But it's just, it's very cute. Oh, number 90. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I was told to get the chicken tinga and the barbacoa. Chicken tinga. Those are really good taco. They aren't kidding when they say the tortillas are handmade. They are fire. But while we're here, let's talk about the performance 
of the Apple MacBook M2 and specifically that new chipset. So firstly, this and the new MacBook Pro 13 are the first two laptops to have Apple's new second generation homemade silicon chipsets inside, the Apple M2. Now to be clear, its performance is just a slight bump over the M1. It is not as good as the M1 Pro, Max, and Ultra. Essentially, those are likely to get their own M2 version. So you'll have the M2 Pro, the M2 Max, and the M2 Ultra. So think of the M2 as like a new base chipset. It's not better than the ones that have surnames, essentially. A little confusing, but that's, that's just how it works. Now, the other thing we need to talk about before we do some real world tests on this laptop is unified memory. So instead of having RAM, as in the memory that the computer uses to multitask, and then a separate VRAM attached to the GPU exclusively used for graphics, Apple, with the new M silicon, we'll call it now, combines this. So what this means in a more practical sense for performance is that even this eight gigs of unified memory is actually a decent amount when we're talking about graphics, as that's a high amount for most GPUs in laptops. And as with the M1 Air and the Pro 13, you can bump that up to 16 gigs, which is a ton of video memory. New to this generation though, you can actually bump that up even higher to 24 gigs. And frankly, that might make a pretty big difference when it comes to more intense graphic workflows like video editing. Now, I would have loved to get one of those and put that in this video, but they sold out very quickly and they're basically just sold out for months. So maybe I'll do another video down the road specifically on like the top model to see what that can do. Regardless, I am still very curious what the base model, the lowest spec and lowest priced MacBook Air, which is what I have here, can do. So firstly, as with the last model, and expectedly, photo editing of my normal workflow, which admittedly isn't too intense, but even with multiple layers and adjustments that some other more expensive computers have had a little issue with, the M2 MacBook Air is totally fine. So on to video editing. Now this is a 4K 422 10-bit project shot on my Sony a7S III that I used previously as a benchmark for what video editing would be like in real life on a number of machines. And this part right here, if I leave the timeline in full resolution, can have some issues with playback not being smooth. And when you're editing to the beat, like each of these photos has to hit when the beat changes, that can be an issue. So here on the base model, Akig Air M2, it plays just fine. And since it's the exact same project, running in DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing software that I use, but it works just as well on PC and Mac, and is also optimized for this chipset, here's how that compared to the other devices that I did this with. First up, the MacBook Pro 13 M1 8 gig model. It actually stutters at the same part and requires me to turn the playback resolution down to half and then it does fine. Now, the M1 MacBook Pro 16 gig model does fine at that part. The MacBook Pro 14 base model with the M1 Pro and 16 gigs of memory has no issues as well. And obviously that means that the top spec has no issues too. The older Intel MacBook Pro 16 top spec also has no issues with that part. And the Razer Blade 14 with Ryzen 9 and RTX 3080 with eight gigs of video memory and 16 gigs of RAM has an issue. But dropping the playback resolution to half solves that as well. Now let's test something a little more CPU intense. Let's have the device track the camera in this case on the screen to put some text next to it and see how long that takes compared to other devices I've tested the same thing with. So here's how long that took and how it compared to the other laptops. All right, now let's just see if we can play back this section because they all have an effect on them called the flicker, which stops the screen and light flickering in the shot, but it usually slows playback down. And the MacBook Air M2 base model has a lot of trouble at full resolution. Changing that to half though seems to solve it. Now the MacBook Pro 13 base model M1 is also janky as expected, and the MacBook Pro 14 lowest model gets close to playing it back in real time, but not quite. The top spec Pro 14, though, handles it no problem. The top model Intel MacBook Pro 16, also janky, and the Razer Blade 14 top spec again, also janky at this part. And lastly, I exported this project as a 4K YouTube video, and here's how long that took, and how long that same thing took again compared to the other laptops. Okay, now I've been sitting here for an hour editing in Resolve and I lost 14%. And here's how that compares to the other laptops that I tested for a similar amount of time doing a similar type of editing in Resolve. Oh, and that means I was doing all this on battery power, obviously. But as someone who comes from using Windows computers a lot to edit footage and how much of a difference there is when you plug those in versus when you don't, it still kind of amazes me that all of these computers have the same exact performance, whether they're plugged in or not. If it looks like we didn't go very far, we didn't. 
We're next door to the coffee shop from earlier at their sister bar called Early Terrible. Now this is apparently one of my sister's favorite bars in the Hudson Valley, and I can see why, I think. It's a mostly outside bar, sort of down a hill from the road, which gives it this more like tranquil, almost whimsical vibe with all of the plants sort of a part of the structures and decorated with a ton of old industrial items juxtaposed nicely by a disco ball inside. They also make good cocktails and food apparently and even use the leftover bagels from the cafe to make bagel chips as a snack. That's something I thought was interesting. The owner was quoted as saying that instead of focusing on the hippie culture or that music festival that we talked about earlier, they quote, wanted to bring out the essence of Woodstock's woody, earthy environment, end quote. And yeah, I think they did. Now, while we're here, let's talk about some of the other unique aspects of the MacBook Air M2. First up, I just wanna say, I like the fact that the charging cable that comes with this MacBook is the same color as the MacBook, minus the white end, which I think they probably could have changed. And of course, the charging brick, which is just your normal 30 watt white charging brick. Now, speaking of that, this charging brick is included with the base model, but you can get a 35 watt dual version so that you can charge two things at once. Obviously, if you do that though, that 35 watts will be split between the devices. Or there's a 67 watt one that will charge the MacBook faster. Both of these will cost you an extra $20. Personally though, I think either one of these is probably a good investment for 20 bucks. But funny enough, going through the configurations on Apple's site, the dual charger or the 67 watt one become included with the laptop whenever you select the M2 81016 chipset plus at least 512 gigs of storage. Not sure why, but there you go. The trackpad is essentially the same, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's very smooth, easy to use, and I like the clicking action of it, frankly. For the keyboard, we have the same as the MacBook Pro 14. And of course, no touch bar, we have regular function keys. Something that is interesting to note though, is there are no speaker grills, like there usually are on either sides of the keyboard. Instead, the speakers are in between the hinge and the bass, but they sound great. There we go, calling it a night. Now I'm gonna say what you probably expect me to say, which is that it's a good laptop because it is. The biggest downside I would say is the fact that it starts the base model that I'm using here, $200 more than the old model. And it's for that reason that Apple is keeping around the M1 version of the MacBook Air, at least for now, because that is a thousand dollars. And then this is 1200. Regardless, any of these laptops are a lot more capable than they used to be, and that's thanks in a big part to the M1 and the M2 chipsets, as I think I've shown in past videos and have shown again in this one. Now, honestly, I am someone who is very agnostic when it comes to their operating systems. I switch between Android and iPhone all the time. I switch between Windows and Mac, and that's why I even use programs like DaVinci Resolve that I've mentioned here to be able to do that and not have my workflow change. But I hate to sound like those people that are waxing poetic about the M processors, but they do. They've changed the way that I would think about recommending laptops to people that do creative work for a profession. I wouldn't always recommend a MacBook before this because truthfully they were more expensive and their power wasn't as good unless you were like, okay, I'll use Apple's own software on this because then it was more optimized and it actually did a much better job. Now though, even programs that aren't Apple's tend to work better on these computers compared to one for the same price somewhere else. And that is something that's never really happened with MacBooks before. And this laptop, is no exception. You'd be hard pressed to find another laptop that can do as much as this can with as much battery life for 1200 bucks. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Uh, what do you think of this laptop? Are there other laptops in that price range that you would rather have? I actually would be very curious to hear that. Let me know in the comments below. Also, what do you think of this format? And as always, I will leave a link in the description below to the best deal that I could find on this laptop. And if you liked exploring with me, please consider subscribing and dinging the bell so that you get notified when I do new videos because if you don't ding that bell, you'll never, you'll never really know. That's how YouTube works now. It's sad, but true. Uh, you can always ignore the notifications when they come, but you know, you shouldn't. You should, you should ding the bell and you should watch all the videos. That's it. Thanks. Which was a British explorer who, oop. Hi, brother. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Save on electricity, truck. I'm in literally like a tiny neighborhood and there goes a truck at the moment that I record. Oh, wait, I hear something else is gonna happen.
I like that you're trying. It's very nice of you. <laughs> On a man named Max Truck Motorcycle. Radcliffe Whitehead a Motorcycle. Whitehead was not on a motorcycle. They didn't exist then. Just in case you're wondering. Crunch, crunch, people walking through stones makes sounds. Click, 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 crunch, 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 crunch. But then, nope, and then they're walking back now. Yeah, they're just pacing by me in the stones. Sounds like a pup is getting hurt. Oh, okay, pup. I think the pup just wants a taco. Another dog has caught word that there are tacos. Now they are, what I can only assume, communicating about tacos. Get the barbacoa. Oh, okay. Send me one. No problem. Apple truck. It's like someone's riding a lawnmower. Another Harley going by. It's the town of Harleys. Don't understand that. Being attacked by ants. They want the tacos.